I'm Catherine, and I work in the Field Operations Division of Friends of NRA at NRA headquarters located in Fairfax, Virginia. This week, Friends of NRA is sending me out to California to experience what it's like to be an NRA field representative. I was shadowing Bob Anderson, one of California's five field representatives. Bob's area runs from Salinas, California to Mariposa and then south to Porterville. Bob got his start with the Friends program on the Merced Committee, where he was chairman for 10 years and volunteered for 13. Bob has been an NRA field representative since 2011. Once I got there, we didn't have much time to waste. Right after I'd arrived, we had our first task right off the bat, a committee meeting at a pizza place in Chowchilla, about half an hour away. The Friends of NRA program fundraises in the form of annual banquets, where attendees can play games to win limited edition firearms and other prizes, as well as bid on firearms and merchandise. These banquets would be impossible without committees composed of volunteers from the areas in which the banquets are held. Each committee typically holds one banquet per year, and these committees hold meetings in order to discuss the banquet's planning and management. Although each committee manages the details for their individual banquet, which is a time-consuming process in itself, the field representative for that region must oversee all of the committees, which is an extremely meticulous and detail-oriented task. On Thursday morning, I headed over to Bob's to help with banquet prep. We spent most of the afternoon getting organized for the banquet on Saturday, like packing up boxes and game supplies. Bob explained to me his typical weekly process to prepare for a banquet that included an extensive before, during, and after banquet checklist. We also discussed general banquet procedures, with a giant emphasis on organization. That evening, we drove about an hour and a half away to attend the Tulare Committee meeting, the committee who was hosting the banquet on Saturday. With the event only a few days away, the committee had a lot to discuss. Aside from taking account of tickets that had been sold, raffle tickets sold for a drawing at the event, logistics with the firearms and the FFL, Banquet setup, catering setup, arrival time, responsibilities during the banquet, and bookkeeping, the committee's main priority was selling the rest of their banquet tickets and raffle tickets before Saturday. As you can see, it took a lot of dedicated people to make this banquet happen. The committee was spearheaded by Chairman Dan Weir, who kept the committee on task and organized during the meeting. About eight years ago as a volunteer, you know, and it just it went from there. Uh, first year as volunteer, second year as co-chair, Third year as chair, took you know that event to a full, basically a full house event, and it's been a full house event ever since at Exeter. Been involved with a lot of the youth hunts and some of the shooting programs, and I've seen the benefits of the whole program. You know, for the youth and women out there right now, there's no better program out there. And the cause is very near and dear to me. And I plan on being in it for a very long time. After dinner, we drove back to Merced to get ready for Friday. One thing I learned very fast about being a field representative is that you have a lot of time on the road, you have a lot of long days, and often long nights. Being an NRA field representative is an around-the-clock job. On Friday, we headed out about an hour away for a committee meeting lunch in Mariposa, California. As usual, our day contained a lot of driving. Before the lunch, we stopped at the auto body shop of Stan Rothfuss, Mary Pose's chairman and last year's Western Region Volunteer of the Year. For all of his hard work, Friends of NRA flew him to the annual meeting in Indianapolis, Indiana, to be recognized along with the other Friends of NRA Volunteers of the Year. Like all dedicated volunteers, you can feel Stan's passion when he's speaking about the Friends program. We spent the rest of the afternoon getting last minute banquet prep taken care of, including packing the truck. Finally, the event day had arrived. After an entire year of planning and preparation, and thanks to the hard work of Bob and his committee, it was time for the banquet. We left Bob's around 8 a.m. for the two-hour drive to Tulare, where the event was being held at the International Agri Center. I was about to get my first glance at a Friends of NRA banquet.
Each committee member took care of different areas of event setup, including coordination with the FFL, setting up the firearms table, setting up the live auction table, and setting up the games and prize bucket tables. I saw how important it was for committees to be flexible and adapt to the changing needs of the banquet setup on event day. The setup took right up until around 425 when we braked for a short meeting before the doors opened at 5. Dan and Bob went over a few last minute checklists, they assigned tasks for running the games and monitoring the tables during the dinner, talked about goals for the evening, and Dan gave the committee a short pep talk. Paul Rodarmel, the Central California field representative, came out to assist with the banquet, and even Stan from the Mariposa committee showed up to help. It reinforced the sense of community the Friends program fosters. Other committees were willing to support one another to see the program succeed as a whole. After a final few words, it was time to let in the attendees and let the banquet begin. During dinner, Bob discussed the funds that had been raised for the shooting sports thanks to the Friends Banquets. Then it was time for the live auction. The auctioneer got the crowd excited with his fast-paced calling on the mic while auctioning off a combination of items from the Friends of NRA standard package and donated merchandise. Finally, it came down to the last drawings, the bucket raffles. Attendees who had played games earlier at the banquet won raffle tickets so they could place in buckets to win different firearms and prize packages. All that was left was to draw the winners, including the winner of the banquet's biggest raffle, a gun safe filled with various firearms. Black ticket, 0, 9, 7, 6, 8, 4. After an exciting evening, the banquet had come to an end. As the crowd cleared out, we took over our last few tasks of the night, which was clean up, packing up supplies, and doing some initial accounting. Well, it was around 11.30 p.m. when we were done, midnight when we left, and we got back to Merced around 2 a.m. Event days were long and a lot of work, but it was also a ton of fun. It was incredible to see so many people come together to help preserve our Second Amendment and shooting sport traditions. I had one more day in Merced before heading back home to headquarters, and Bob surprised me by taking me to one of California's wonders, Yosemite National Park. Although I only saw a fraction of the work that goes into the preparation and planning of a banquet, I learned a lot. Field representatives have insane schedules, long hours, and constant travel. They have to juggle several roles, people, and various events, all while staying organized and calm under pressure as well as on their toes if last minute issues come up. It's a lot of work, but they do it all to support the shooting sports. I had a great time and I met a lot of passionate people. Thanks to the support of people across the country, the Friends of NRA program is always growing, and I can't wait to see what else the future of this program has in store. <laughs>